Please welcome Vicki Steed. Vicki's here with us and um, with uh, Remy Renton. They'll be showing in this room at one o'clock. Reproduce. Vicki is the librarian for research data management and reproducibility at New York University. She has a dual appointment between the Division of Libraries and the Center for Data Science. Thanks, Vicki. Okay. So Remy's sitting down, but maybe just wave your hand, Remy. Remy um, wrote or rewrote Reprozip and currently is the dev. My role is like outreach education user facing stuff. So um, I'm gonna let him sit down for this, but ask him technical questions. Um, so a few things Reprozip tries to solve. So we've seen a lot of these uh, challenges in reproducibility. So uh, the first one I wanna point to is just work and time. It takes a lot of time to get your stuff ready to share. So in real life, this is just the incentive problem. Reproducibility takes time and it's not currently valued by academic structures. And so we've seen this in a few different studies that one is off screen, but you can see Vicki Stodden has 77% uh, claim they don't have time to document and clean up code. So obviously a challenge. Another thing Reprozip tries to solve is the big uh, technical obsolescence. So when libraries get updated, that can break your stuff. And also normative dissidents. So I have a link down there, but basically those who espouse openness don't always themselves make it open. And this is basically what we call the pipeline problem. So reproducibility requires skills that aren't really in most curriculums. And this again is a pretty well documented issue. But the big challenge reproducibility tries to solve is uh, dependency hell. So one library depends on one, depends on the other, blah, 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 all the way down to these incredibly complex trees of dependencies. So you can't expect people reasonably to like one, document all of these, because I'm sure some of them are hidden, and two, reinstall them. So we've identified this gap where we need a tool that can automatically capture all of these in the original computing environment and then automatically set them up in another environment. So the big question, how do I do all this without spending all of my research time on it? And we would say use Reprozip. So Reprozip automatically packs and captures all the necessary data files, libraries, environmental variables, et cetera, to reproduce your analysis or anything really. We have a website as an example as well. And then you can open, unpack, and reproduce it anywhere, anytime, any operating system. So uh, I'm gonna run through just uh, like a quick example as a little snapshot of what we might be doing in the breakout. So this is a domain specific one from neuroscience. It's a beautiful Jupyter notebook, but Jupyter notebooks are still, uh, you know, subject to dependency help. So the original experiment in a virtual machine is two gigabytes and a represent package, it's 47 megs. So very easily shareable object. Um, so here's the pretty version of that, uh, like binary I showed earlier. So you originally pack on Linux, um, so you, uh, the output of that, so there's, you trace it and then you pack it. You get this cute little package. You can share it and then anyone can unpack it regardless of their OS. So we have videos instead of doing this live. So if I was gonna run Python brain segmentation.py to trace it with Reprozip, I would just have to prepend Reprozip trace brain, uh, there we go, Reprozip trace uh, just to the beginning of the command. And so then that will trace literally everything the script touches, including operating system variables, system calls, et cetera. I'm gonna skip through. And then to just make that short, small reproducible package, it's just reprozip pack, then you name the package. So the script or whatever you're using executes as it would normally execute. And then at the end, you just make this tiny package. Currently we have four unpackers, but we work on a plugin model. So if Docker goes away in 20 years, uh, and there's a comparable system, like something else, a containerization. The big one I've heard is Rocket. If somebody from Rocket wants to make an unpacker, please do. Um, so the two are on Linux. So directory and chroot, which just uh, unpacks into a single directory. So it doesn't really uh, get at the core of the problem of dependency hell. Really, Vagrant and Docker are the ones that I would recommend. You can use them on any. So the user requires no knowledge of Vagrant or Docker to be able to unpack with them. Basically, so we, new feature from Daspos, we have a GUI now, which I really like. So you can see our four unpackers listed there. You just find your RPZ file in your file system, and then you can choose Docker or Vagrant. So in this example, we choose Vagrant. It gives you some um, examples or some options to customize how you want to unpack it. I'm gonna skip ahead. And then basically you just run setup, and it's setting up your Vagrant virtual machine for you. You literally just have to click twice and you get a Vagrant virtual machine. Oops. So then you can rerun it. Um, I'm just gonna pause. Oops, okay. 
I'm going to pause on this to point out a few things also. So um, this is going to rerun the experiment inside of a virtual image for you. And again, all you have to click is run experiment, and that'll boot up. So you don't have to do anything besides click a few times. However, if you want to, there's a manage file tab right there. I don't know if the res is good enough. You can see it. It's above the highlighted bit. Basically, you can upload your own inputs. So if somebody is using a methodology in your field that's close to what you already use, just upload your own inputs and rerun. You can download the outputs. And then if, uh, down here, you can elevate privilege, for instance, if, if you need uh, something to have pseudo, um, et cetera. If you, have, you can have multiple runs. So there's only one run here. But you could trace things that have, we have a machine learning example that has four different scripts that are out here. So we're just going to choose to run this one. We're going to say we're going to enable the display. So we have a few different options. You run it. So uh, Reprozip is doing all this for you. You don't have to touch it. And then you can see, I, I didn't include it in this presentation, but you get the, um, you get the pretty brain images. Um, so Reprozip can pack like pretty much anything so far. So data analysis scripts, graphical tools, interactive tools, client server applications. So we have a few websites on our examples. Jupyter Notebooks, MPI experiments, et cetera. So our few use cases, so there are a few academic ones. So we're recommended in the Information Systems Journal Reproducibility um, and a few ACM guidelines also. There's a lab at NYU using it to make archival snapshots of their research. So if something breaks two weeks later, they can always play with it in the Reprozip um, image. And so we, uh, we've also recently been integrated into Core, which is, um, Oh my God, it's something of repro cloud of reproducible records, which we found out through Twitter. So if you're using it, tell us, please. Um, and we are recently engaging in a project to archive data journalism apps because we've seen a lot of uh, journalism projects go by the wayside because of funding. So now we have packaged them up. Um, we have use cases all the way from machine learning to digital humanities. So we found it's a really portable and applicable tool. So we have all of those um, videos I saw on YouTube, but we also, everything we do is completely open source and available. So if you want to contribute, add issues even, or bug reports, please do it on our GitHub. You can check out some of our examples and documentation there um, and tweet at us because I'm super active on Twitter. So thank you, Natalie, for inviting us. Um, Fernando, because I poached some of his slides. Juliana's our PI. You can get this presentation on the OSF at that link and like feel free to email us and come to our breakout to see how we can package up your work. Thanks. Um, any questions for Ricky or Remy before the breakout presentation of the Amazon? Yeah, you can ask a question. Sure. Is it like for an interactive or a graphical app, what we're talking about is not like a, a YouTube video. You can actually interact with this app in yep. any way that it was interacted with while it was being recorded. Yes, exactly you that. Keep the question to the oh, sorry. So he's asking if I can use interactive apps the same way with the same level of interactivity as when they were packed. Yeah, so actually like two days ago, Remy and I were in Vienna showing this off. So we were at a climate science conference and we packaged up a 3D application that shows wind moving over a map. So when we unpacked it, it's not on here, but it's linked in our examples website. Um, so we unpacked it and you can change parameters. You can move it around in 3D um, and you can do pretty much, it's a bit slower because it's in a VM, but you have the same functionality as when you packed it. Thanks. Other questions? Thank you, Ricky. Yep.